Okay, welcome guys to our next session. It's called OpenShift Ninja in 20 minutes. It's a workshop prepared by uh, Tomasz Tomeczek, who will give us some overview and basics of OpenShift. So go ahead, Tomasz. Okay, thank you, Mai. So not just basics, we'll learn some cool ninja tricks with OpenShift. So welcome everyone. Uh, so this is a workshop, so I don't have any slides. My slides are this browser session, so you can see all my slides in the tabs above. Uh, I actually didn't have any coffee, so I feel kind of like this. <laughs> so please bear with me if I'm slow sometimes. Okay, so we have 20 minutes to become ninjas in OpenShift, uh, but you, I, I think it's clear that 20 minutes is probably not enough. So that's why I go back to this stuff. Uh, that's why we are actually organizing a full-blown course for beginners for OpenShift. Budeteda Česky, uh, because there is plenty of English material out there so you can learn Kubernetes or OpenShift. So we wanted to do one in Czech. Uh, so if you want a spot, please go to openhouse.redhead.com slash cz slash OpenShift and fill can out our maybe, form. Can you maybe share a link? Uh, yeah, I can put it in chat. Yeah, thank you. Uh, okay, yeah. So if you want to uh, come here, we have four lessons. Here is the description of the lessons and I'll briefly touch some of them today. So this is what we prepared for you. It's completely free. You just need to come and learn. Uh, OK, let's get back to our 20 minutes. Uh, I, I prepared materials for our today's workshop. It's here. It's on GitHub. And I can also paste the link. So if you don't follow or want to try it yourself at home, uh, here is what I'm going to be doing. Here is some more uh, commands which you can run and actually do the exact same thing I'll be doing here. I'm going to paste it here as well. OK, that's course workshop materials. So let's start with some ninja tricks. So first thing which you should know as an OpenShift Ninja is the connection between Kubernetes and OpenShift, because if you go to a conference or start talking with your friends that, hey, you are an OpenShift Ninja, they'll ask you like, OK, so but what about Kubernetes? Like, like what's the uh, difference? OK, so Kubernetes is, uh, let's say, complicated system, which is a very good description uh, here, for example, in their documentation. And everyone has their own description. So let's read it. Kubernetes is a portable, extensible open source platform for managing containerized workloads and services. Yeah, that's, that's pretty nice, but very complicated. So what I like to describe Kubernetes, it's just platform to run applications or containerized applications, if you want to make it a little bit fancy. So that's what Kubernetes is. It's very good at it. It's being used a lot. And I would say it's being used more and more every day and getting bigger and better. So why do we have OpenShift then if we already have this Kubernetes? Well, Kubernetes is pretty good, but maybe it's not good enough. It lacks several features like user management, uh, namespaces, and fancy web UI and, and monitoring and these extra things. So that's why we have OpenShift. So OpenShift is Kubernetes, but it's better because it has more features. It's also more complicated, but OpenShift is definitely better. That's my opinion. and. Here, I have 14 more minutes to prove it to you. Uh, one thing which I really like about like OpenShift or uh, what we do at Red Hat is that you can try it for free. Uh, I will not go into details how to install OpenShift yourself. It's not very, like it's fairly okay, but it's like completely different topic. So that's why uh, our team prepared this OpenShift Sandbox, you can just go to this website. Uh, I'll also paste the link in the chat. Uh, and you can go here, click Launch Your Developer Sandbox for that OpenShift. Wait 
I don't know, around 20 minutes. And then you get the link into your email and you can start playing with OpenShift for one month for free completely. And then if that's not enough, you can request it again and play with it. So, and that's what I did for this workshop. Actually, I clicked this link, got my cluster, uh, set up the demo and let's, lo let's look at the demo. But before we do that, are there any questions? And I cannot see chat since I'm sharing my screen. So, uh, my, if you could please. No, there, are, there are any. Okay, thank you. But if you have any, please ask them away or feel free to imp interrupt me. Okay, so I prepared a small demo. Uh, it's available on this address. It's bit.ly slash three small v nine capital R C F capital A. It's like a small demo application and I'm going to open it and I can also paste this link. Okay, this is how my demo looks like. And okay, I can see someone else joined, very nice. So can we then some more people? So it's, it's a demo of WebSockets technology WebSockets is like a browser web server tech, which is usually used in all these new applications like Twitter, Facebook, any chat or anything. And what we can do here, we can actually move these uh, boxes around and, and that's, that's it. And if you are a developer, you can open your console and, and see some logs like that WebSockets are being used. And we can even see it up here in the log that like several WebSocket events are happening and, and we are being informed about it. Okay, so thank you so much for joining. And this application, it's it's actually very trivial. It's running in my OpenShift cluster, which I set up and let's look at it. So it's over here. Uh, I'm not paste, gonna paste this link because you won't have access to my cluster and I don't want to give it to you. Uh, but if I go back, uh, maybe to topology, there, there is only a single application here running inside my OpenShift cluster. It's called WebSockets Demo. Uh, it's composed of three Kubernetes or OpenShift objects. One is pod, the other is service, and the final is route. And each of these objects has specific functionality, uh, which does it very well. So for example, pod, that's the actual execution when the web server is running and where everything's happening. Then the service is the abstraction for the fact that we have a web server. So it's serving content on the port 8081 and we just want to make it available. And finally, we have route. So we actually make sure that our application is exposed to the public. And that's what route is doing, that it's actually connection connecting our service to the public so that I can click here and I'll be back into the demo. Okay, and if I go to the pod, that's where everything is happening, uh, all the execution, we can see metrics, we can see some nice charts. Well, since the application is so trivial, it doesn't consume almost any memory or any CPU, but in the end, you can see that some network traffic happened here or, or some files were created. So, so the fact that we just started uh, connecting, like something happened, and this is like, what you can see easily for your application deployed in OpenShift. Uh, you can see much more, you can see logs. Uh, yeah, you can see that you are doing something. So the application is logging the events to the console and plenty of more. And I'm not gonna go through the whole, uh, this browser or, or this web interface because that's what the full course is about. Okay. so. This is the one way we can uh, work with OpenShift, but true ninjas are actually doing it via command line. And let's do that instead of uh, playing here. So the way you uh, utilize command line interface of OpenShift or Kubernetes is that you go here, that's my name, and click here, copy login command. Okay, I need to authenticate again, just to be secure and here, OpenShift just shows me my command, which I can run, and then I'll be authenticated with my cluster and I can actually work with it from the command line. 
And the fact that I just shared my API token with you, like if you are fast enough, you can copy it and, and connect to my cluster. So that's why I'll, I'll go away very quickly. <laughs> but I'm going to close the cluster probably after the demo. <laughs> okay, so let's copy it. Uh, okay, I just pasted it. And now it tells me that I just log into my cluster as Tito Mechek, which is myself, and I have two namespaces in there. We were working in the Tito Mechek dev namespace. That's where our application is deployed. And the cluster also has another namespace for staging deployment, but I wasn't using that one. Okay, so let's hide it. Okay, right now we are in so command line. I can can you maybe bigger. zoom in? Oh yeah, I can do that. Because okay. we can't really read it. Okay, is, is this better? A bit. Okay, so I can make it even further like this. Yeah, yes, thank you. Okay, so probably the first command you want to run it's similar as what you do with git it's just status command and you immediately see the very similar information we, we saw or probably you couldn't see but now you can see it again and it's in what server we are working on in which project or namespace does the same thing and and like what objects are deployed and you already saw all of them in the web console so we have the pod uh we have the service and we have deployment, so that's what I didn't talk about much, but uh, it's something that like covers the whole thing, the deployment. Okay. Uh, okay, what else? So status is one command. OpenShift has also another set of commands. So it has all these objects like port and service and deployment, and you can get them or describe them. So you can do OC get pods, for example. And it will show me the only pod there is. And I can also describe it. So I can do OC describe, uh, oh yeah, describe pod and this one. And I'll get very similar information as we saw in the web interface, but, ex but with the exception that this is text, this is not like fancy charts and, and tables and everything. Okay, this is something which you can do very easily from the command line. What I also like to do is like verify that uh, like I am working with my user because you can also authenticate with different users. So you can do OC, who am I? And yeah, it tells me it's me. But actually Op OpenShift Ninjas do it even like even better. They are, they are running OC, get users. So show me all the users, but usually if you are not an administrator, you cannot do that, but you can do some like this. OC get users and then write tilde in apostrophes. And then I get like more information about myself and you can even do some like this. So to export this information into YAML format and you get like very detailed information about like where you have access and like who you are and, and all these things, yeah. I, I, I think this is like really fancy, <laughs> but if you don't need it, you can just run, who am I? Uh, okay, I showed logs. You can also get logs like here. Uh, okay, let's clear this. So what I like to do is when I need to figure out what's happening in our deployment or in our application, I do OC get all, which means that I want to know everything about everything. So show it to me. It takes some time because it needs to do a lot of requests. Uh, but in the end, it will tell me uh, about all the objects that are deployed in our namespace. Oh, yeah. So again, we see the same things we saw previously, the pod with the execution, the service, the deployment, or oh, something new, a replica set, and finally the route. And you probably want also want to know logs. That's something like one of the first things you need to do. Like if you're trying to troubleshoot something, look at logs. So you can do OC logs F to follow them. And we can do it either for the pod or even for the whole deployment. So we can do something like this. And I'll, I'll get the logs again we saw in the web console. Now oh, I can see that someone is already disconnecting from, from there. Nice. Uh, okay, that's actually everything what I prepared.
and I can see that I managed it sooner than in 20 minutes. So I'm going to back to the, the browser. No, not that one. Yeah, this one. And if you have any questions or comments, we can have some discussion here. Let me stop sharing. For now, there are no questions, but go ahead, guys. I know you are ninjas now, <laughs> but feel free to ask something. Okay, maybe question from me. So was this useful? Was it like too advanced or too basic? Or would you prefer to know something specific? <laughs> okay, maybe. Okay, I'll answer Dorka's question then. Uh, so what's the workshop about? Uh, yeah, I, I briefly talked about it in the beginning, but now that you are ninjas, uh, we can actually talk about the details. So what we are planning to talk about or, or show you or even teach you on the workshop is, so what I did right now, but uh, prepare a more complicated demo. Like the demo I prepared was only a single pod, so it's like very easy. Uh, usually the applications have databases or caches or, or even different e interfaces and, and like many more pods. So we'll definitely prepare one which is more complicated. Uh, and OpenShift has a very nice widget for that, that it will show you all the connections between all the pods. So the fact that I only had one, I couldn't demonstrate it. So that will be probably first thing we'll do there, prepare a more complicated application, which is like more real. Then we'll definitely explain much further uh, all these objects I was talking about, like pods and services, deployments, controllers, uh, and everything. Uh, we will also be talking about metrics and logging and monitoring. Uh, that's also very important, like to know how many users you have or how your application behaves and if it misbehaves so that you can configure it better. We'll also talk about containerization because like every application in OpenShift needs to run in a container and that's not super trivial process. So uh, we need to talk about that as well. Uh, and I can maybe look at the agenda if I forgot something. Oh yeah, and on lex lesson three, there is scheduling, placement rules and network policies. And to be honest, I actually never used that one. My colleague will be discussing that. I'm, I'm actually really looking forward because I've never had a need to do that. So that, that's another thing. Okay, we have one more question. Uh, Yiji is asking if OpenShift is using Podman in any way. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's a very good question. So, uh, okay, I'm trying to figure out the answer. So, yes, as I said, everything that runs in OpenShift needs to be containerized, running containers. And like back in the day, a few years ago, everything was running in Docker and Docker was the only container engine that was used in Kubernetes. But in these days, this is now, there is actually like a driver architecture in Kubernetes that there is a specification for the container runtime, uh, how it, like how it should behave. And then you can implement it in like whatever language, however you want. So right now there are multiple implementations like Docker is one of them. Uh, and the and actually Podman is not one of them. Podman is a tool that you can use locally on your laptop to run containers. Uh, but there is a different implementation which uses the same backend as Podman. Uh, it's called Cryo. So Cryo and Podman are like kind of the same thing. Like the backend is the same, but the front-end part is different because Cryo is specifically built for Kubernetes and OpenShift, while Podman is the uh, container runtime for you on your desktop or on your laptop. Yeah, I hope that uh, clears that up. <laughs> okay. 
It seems it does. Okay, uh, one more question maybe, the last one. Is anyone brave enough to ask something? <laughs> Well, if not, that's fine. You have all the links in the chat, so please go through the links if you want. You can even reach out. There should be contacts to me or my colleagues, uh, so we'll be happy to ask, uh, answer any questions, and we are looking forward to see on the workshop. So thank you very much for participating in this workshop. Also, Tomasz, for your uh, presentation and uh, enjoy the rest of uh, open house.